He's not Spider-Man. He's not the Punisher. And he might be a little unstable, just like this podcast. It's time to look at the moon and search the signs for the history of Moon Knight. Because your geek history lesson is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Jason. Fly me to the moon, Inman. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you have stumbled onto the podcast where we take one character, construct, or crooner from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about them in about an hour. I didn't think Fly Me to the Moon was going to be your Moon Knight show. <laughs> well, we are talking about a very lunar character, as some would say. Um, what is the, um, I forgot, is, uh, what is the Roman or what is the astrological equivalent of the moon? Like the goddess of the moon? Yeah. Artemis. Diana. Ah, cool. Yeah, See? Yeah. So yeah, how are you going to make a character called Moon Knight whose powers are tied to the moon and make it a man? Yes, we're gonna be talking a we're gonna we're gonna be talking a lot about the gods connected to Moon Knight in the Moon. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because everybody, there is a new Disney Plus series that might be live by the time you're listening. This might not be live, uh, starring Oscar Isaacs and Gattaca's own Ethan Hawke. Yeah, that's right. I'm a big Gattaca fan, so I'm always gonna mention that movie. Uh, Hamlet himself, Ethan Hawke. Yes, modern Hamlet himself. Uh, but I'm a Gattaca fan. If you, by the way. Gattaca, modern sci-fi classic. Do you I'm, think it holds up? Yes, I do. GHL Gattaca, yes, if you oh, would like us to. Completely not for our audience at all. Never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> but we're here to talk about Moon Knight. He is a very interesting character. He's connected to the moon. He's connected to aliens. He's connected to mythology. And I will say, uh, I, I, I got to put a caveat in this right before we even get any further into this podcast, because we have to get a little serious. And this is, I know caveats are Ashley's thing, but for today's episode, I have to do it. So Mark Spector, guys, he is the man, of course, behind the Moon Knight mask. Uh, he has dissociative identity disorder, or sometimes referenced as DID. It's an uncommon condition associated with traumatic childhood events. And it also has a history of being over sensual, um, sensationalized in media. Now, the time of this recording, we have not seen the Moon Knight Disney Plus mm -hmm. series. Um, I don't know how they're going to handle it. I hope they handle it well. I hope they talk to some experts. Um, if you don't know, the, of course, DID was also formerly known as multiple personality disorder. Uh, people with this condition generally have two or more persistent personality states and memory gaps. And also, there are alternate identities that are commonly known as alters. Or dissociated parts. I'm going to be mentioning a lot of that during this podcast, but I want to say that I am not a doctor. I have no <laughs> medical training. I am a writer. I'm a podcaster. So I will do my absolute best to represent these correctly, but I can only kind of recount and give you what previous Moon Knight writers have done with the characters. So if I make a mistake, it's not intentional. I apologize. And this podcast is in no way making light of anyone with mental issues. And if you have DID, uh, we love you. If you have any mental disorders, mm -hmm. we encourage you to look after yourself because we love you. Yeah, it's just like Mark Spector should look after himself. <laughs> yeah, instead of being a vigilante. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of his problems would be solved if he just stopped being Moon Knight. I mean, same thing with Batman, though. <laughs> uh, now we have to get to the fun stuff because fun fact, this is our most requested geek history lesson subject of all time. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to stretch. Uh, I'm going to make myself comfortable, and I'm going to uh, recline as if I am watching the final trailer, at, or the final credits for the Lord of the Rings Return of the King, because they are 18 minutes long. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> real quickly, Ashley, before I get to all these TAs, can you let everybody know where, if they want to suggest a future lesson, where they might do that, like these wonderful people. Yes, if you would like to request future lessons on literally anything, you can do that at geekhistorylesson.com, facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson, on Twitter at GHL Podcast, or on Instagram in the comments section. Don't send us DMs. We don't read them at Geek History Lesson. Yes, all right. Moon Knight was, uh, was requested by these wonderful TAs. Bob Zanub, Zaxelbrax, The Anderson, Shamshaw, William Larson, Gavin Crabtree, Matt Schrader, Cyrus Rodrigues, Justin Stair, Buried in Trash, Surgeons 2, 
Morgan Everson, John Witherspoon, Brandon Morrison, Matthew Joseph Centauri, Rob Curlin, Lance Kaminsky, Scott Zotiak, Zotak, Ryan Bill, James Wilson, Aaron Munn, Bob Flores, Edward Jarina, Daniel Wren, Mac Lacey, at Anthony McKee 95, at Geeks with Shields, Justin Shiflet, Miguel Para, at Lord Mall 12, Michael Miller, Rashad Samuels, James Wilson, Alec Mullins, at Jimmers, Dwayne Joseph Burke, at Snyder Girl, at Black Jesu 5, Travis Pratt, Mike Shea, Alex Langley, Mark A. Smith, at Mick Gar Mentions, The Comic Source, Mike Jones, Jay Pereira, at Mike Mixtape, at Merc with a Movie Blog, at Casually Cosplaying, at Jay Johnson, at I Don't Know Movies, at Spider underscore Hawk, Geeks with Shields Podcast. Hey, you requested it twice. Aaron Munn. Oh, they requested it much more than twice. <laughs> Brian Ganninger, Chris Natalie, Joseph2179, and Stephen LeSaint. So thank you all for requesting and making this the most requested episode of... Sorry, um, Enter Cat Franco just trying to jump up on the desk behind Jason, and it really startled me. Oh. And then he saw you and thought, I will not do this. I will be caught. <laughs> I just saw your expression, and I was like, what the hell yeah, is she he staring was, at? He was sitting on the desk for about a second, and then you turned your head, and he bailed. All right, let's get to the 10 cent origin, Ashley. Which is the first part of the podcast where Professor Jason is going to teach you all the who's it's and what's it's galore it's about Moon Knight. In case you go to, I guess, a DC, DC, Disney Plus streaming party, and someone is unfamiliar with Mark Spector, which honestly could happen it's probably very likely all right this is a marvel Mar uh moon knight is a marvel comics character his first appearance was in werewolf by night number 32 in august of 1975 he was created by doug uh monick or mench i'm not i've never been on uh, he's a great creator i've never been 100 percent certain how to say his last name if you've never heard it we're doing yeah. our best uh D and don perlin his alter ego is Mark Spector, I mean, among in many others, but Mark Spector is his main identity. Uh, his team affiliations are the Avengers, the Secret Avengers, the West Coast Avengers. We're going to get to those. Dun, dun, dun. The Defenders, the Midnight Suns, the Marvel Knights, the Heroes for Hire, the United States Marine Corps, which I don't know if it's really a team affiliation, but fine. And Force <laughs> Reconnaissance. His notable aliases have been Stephen Grant, Jake Lockley, the Fist of Khonshu, and Mr. Knight. His abilities are he's an expert detective. He is proficient in martial arts and armed combat. He utilizes high-tech equipment. And he used to have, but not currently, increased strength, speed, endurance, depending on the lunar cycle. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into that. He used to actually have superpowers. Mm -hmm. So uh, we just want to tell you real quick that today's Meet Cute is brought to you by Ashley's comic book, Aurora and the Eagle. Because we're talking about Moon Knight, the comic book. Let's talk about some independent comic books like Aurora and the Eagle. It's on Kickstarter right now. Well, Ashley, tell us about Aurora and the Eagle. Okay, so at the time you're listening to this, there's like two or three days left until my campaign ends. It ends on March 31st at 6 a.m. So head over to auroraandtheeagle.com if you've read a bunch of Moon Knight and you're looking for a little more levity in your superheroes. It was my birthday two days ago, so if you would like to give me a birthday present. Happy birthday! Please support my independent comic book, Aurora and the Eagle. Aurora Borealis, it might shock you to learn, is the human embodiment of the Northern Lights. It was the most Canadian thing that I could imagine, besides maple syrup powers. So, like myself, <laughs> Although she, you should do something with that one. <laughs> you know, maybe for the project that you and I are going to do after this. <laughs> she hops on a plane, just like I did, to immigrate to America in order to become the best superhero possible by training with the Eagle, the way that I started Geek History Lesson and trained with Jason and then she has to and this is something I'm really excited about because this was the initial twist that I had in mind she has to over the course of this 48 page prestige issue step up and save the eagle once his deep dark secret is finally revealed it's, dun, dun, dun. it's what I always wanted to tell in the first act of the story and now I am finally able to do it there's one GHL ad left so if you would like to hear your amazing comic podcast or uh, maybe just promote your Instagram account you mean as a tear on your camera yes, yes. here mm -hmm. on GHL then go over pick up my new comic pick yourself up a GHL ad and then be a part of the whole Jawin experience 
it. Yeah, awesome. So, AuroraAndTheEagle.com. Get on that comic. All right, let's get into the meet cute. Ashley, what's that? That is the second part of the lesson where we tell you where we meet a character and how cute it is because we stole it from romantic comedy writing. Ashley, I'm very curious. Where did you first meet cute? Moon Knight. You know... I'm pretty sure it was on this podcast when you brought up Moon Knight and I said, I don't know who Moon Knight is. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've literally never heard of Moon Knight mm-hmm. um, until at some point after I met you. Mm-hmm. Um, Moon Knight doesn't really fall in the purview of Marvel Comics characters that I read a lot about, to be perfectly fair. Um, I was mostly an X-Men person for a long time, but I can tell you this for sure. I didn't read a Moon Knight character until like, I didn't read a Moon Knight book until two weeks ago. So that's the date that I can pinpoint to. Uh, Two weeks ago, I read my first Moon Knight comic. All right. How about you, Jason? I don't remember specifically. Yeah. I kind of feel like Moon Knight is one of these characters that I kind of always realized was around. Mm -hmm. I can tell you specifically what type of comic book I think the first Moon Knight comic book was. I'm very certain it was a 90s Spider-Man comic. And I've Mm. told this story many times that I used to, when I was a kid... I got most of my comic books from Walmart Mm -hmm. because I lived in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, and there was nothing around. Mm -hmm. Um, And back back in the day, Walmart would have these five dollar packs of like 10 comics. Mm -hmm. And I know for certain in one of those packs was some issue of Mm Spider-Man and Moon Knight was there. Mm -hmm. And it was very 90s and it was very extreme and they all had so many muscles that they couldn't move. And I remember looking at this guy and first off saying, why is he all white? All the villains are going to see him a mile away. Mm -hmm. And then you learn that that's part of the character. Um, And then also I remember thinking, won't that get dirty on all those rooftops? Yeah. Like really dirty? It looks good though on panel. It's a good look. Yeah. It's, it's, to be honest with you, I'm going to say this. I kind of think the look of Moon Knight is the best thing about Moon Knight. I agree. His look is very specific, but not practical. Well, there's really nothing practical. You know how much he would have to he would have to have like 75 different versions of that costume because some of those stains aren't coming out. That's true. So, all right, let's get to the to the history 101 Which of is Moon Knight. The main meat of the lesson where Professor Jason will literally teach you everything you need to know about Moon Knight. Let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to start with some publication history here. Uh Moon Knight was as I said, as I said created by Doug uh, Moink or Mench, I'm uncertain how to say his last name, and artist Don Perlin. And his first appearance was in Werewolf by Night, Volume 1, Issue 32, in 1975. Moon Knight was originally intended to be a one time only villain mm. as a foil to the Werewolf by Night, aka Jack Russell. That's the Werewolf by Night. Uh, Werewolf by Night is a great book, by the way. Yeah. That, the OG OG is so good. Uh, Disney should... Uh, they announced that they are. They are making a Werewolf by Night? They are making a Werewolf by Night. A low-budget Werewolf by Night movie? Be great. Be really good. All right, so Moon Knight was to be a mercenary who was much more sympathetic to his target than his employers who hired him. However, he received such a huge reader response that instead of being an obscure villain to the Werewolf by Night, Moon Knight suddenly started guest starring in several other comic books until he finally got his own title. And that is how he became the character that he is. Now, I will tell you that Moon Knight's origin flips from mental instability to supernatural to alien, depending on who's writing him. Mm -hmm. And I'll pick up some of those threads and some of them I won't because they get very confusing. Um, But here's a big interesting idea or theme to consider when thinking about Moon Knight. Um, you know the villain Taskmaster, right, Ashley? I do. Yes, and I don't mean the uh, not, so, not so great version that was in Black Widow. I'm talking about the Marvel Comics Taskmaster yes. who is like a badass Captain America that if he can watch your moves... He can mimic them back and you're, you're out of luck. Yes, he has almost like perfect mimetic memory. Mm-hmm. Taskmaster refuses to mimic Moon Knight. And here's why. Okay. Whether through his own insanity or his faith in his moon god, Khonshu, we'll get to that, listeners, Mark Spector, the Moon Knight, doesn't block any incoming hits. He takes blow after blow, even allowing arrows and bullets to pierce him and keeps fighting. 
Now, this was established in 2006 by novelist Charlie Houston. Um, and I will say I do see evidence that this connects to the entirety of Mark Spector's run and origin. So I wanted to bring that up now mm -hmm. because I think it might inform and kind of give you a connective tissue here to Mark Spector's. When you think about a guy that does that, you're like, oh, I kind of understand you a little bit better now. Yeah, that's um, dark. It's dark and he's it kind of seems like he's willing to constantly punish himself. Yeah, it kind of seems like he has a death wish. Yes, you could say that. There is a lot of death in this character. So let's get to uh, the fictional biography here. Um, the rebellious son of an academic Jewish rabbi who fled Europe during the Holocaust, Mark Spector was born in Chicago, Illinois. Mark could not fully understand why his father refused to fight against his father's persecution and grew disgusted in his pacifist ways, viewing his father as a coward. Now, Mark discovered during the last year of his childhood that Ra Rabbi Yitz Perlman, who lived in his neighborhood, was in fact a Nazi deserter. Eep. Mark's fighting instinct kicked off for the very first time when he fended off against Perlman to escape his grasp. Now, Perlman later disappeared without a trace. And this traumatic event is said in Moon Knight history to be the event that caused Mark to develop disassociative identity disorder. Okay. The fact that he had this rabbi in his past who he loved and he trusted, who ultimately betrayed him and he had a big old fight with. Okay. So Im imagine it's sort of like um, finding out your grandfather was a Nazi, basically. It's kind of the idea of this. No, my grandfather killed Nazis. I know that for a fact. Well, good for him. <laughs> uh, so because of this, Mark developed the altars of Stephen Grant and Jake Lockley during his childhood, although he wouldn't understand this in Quotel quite later on. This is actually, uh, we'll get into this a little if, bit. If I can interrupt really briefly, uh -huh. in the Moon Knight trailer, and I'll talk about the trailer so as not to spoil anything, Steven is the character who is addressed when people speak to Oscar Isaac. Mm -hmm. So if you were, here's, here's your little tidbit about Look, Stephen Grant. And it wouldn't surprise me, knowing Moon Knight and how, again, I don't know how they're going to handle the DID, but... It wouldn't surprise me if they start off in one of the alternate altars and then the flip of the series believe, is that, oh, you're Mark Spector. Yeah, I, that's that's my prediction as well. Or somebody shows up and says, hey, Mark. And he's like, huh? That that happens in the trailer. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, so just before his father, Mark's father, decided to basically send Mark and uh, enlist him, or not enlist him, but put him into the Putnam Psychiatric Hospital. Mm -hmm for mental instability, Mark was first approached by the Egyptian deity, Khonshu, who claimed to be Mark's true progenitor. Now, this is a retcon okay. of Mark's history by a later storyline. We'll get to that second. Originally, there were no altars in his childhood. Khonshu did not show up until Egypt uh, again, but we got to get through this complicated origin. So he later uh, got out of the hospital, mm -hmm. and the minute he did, he felt betrayed by his father, and he ran away to the Marines, enlisted immediately. <laughs> he was like, you know what's a safe and welcoming place? Yep. The Marines. But he's a fighter. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Uh, he was dishonorably discharged pretty quickly. I would imagine so. Yes. Um, and, you know, then he did what most people do when they're dishonorably discharged. What do you think that is, Ashley? Oh, boy. Based on real life events or for a comic book? Let's go for comic book. Become a superhero. Uh, no, he became a mercenary, a soldier of fortune. Oh, that would have been one of my real life answers. <laughs> uh, so Mark went independent because he wasn't done fighting. Sure. And he befriended Frenchie Duchamp. Uh, and they both became soldiers for hire. Now, Spectre and Frenchie, and Frenchie is, I won't mention him a lot, but Frenchie is Mark's best friend. Frenchie is Mark's Alfred. Great, 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 yeah. great. Thank you. Um, so Spectre and Frenchie met Raoul Bushman in Egypt, and they traveled together as soldiers for hire to North Sudan near the Egyptian border mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. an archaeological site raid. Now, Bushman killed the lead archaeologist, Peter uh, al Rain to locate a pharaoh's tomb that was said to have been filled with treasure. But Spectre punched Bushman to protect al Rain's daughter, who Bushman also wanted to kill. Mm-hmm. Uh, this daughter is named Marlene. Now, Marlene mm. is basically Mark's Lois Lane. Mm -hmm. She will enter his life. She will exit his life. She will always be around in some form of another. 
Great. Um, but depending on the writer, uh, it's all on does Marlene like Mark at this month or does Marlene hate Mark this month? So uh, furious, Bushman mortally wounded Mark Spector in the desert, killing everyone in the place except for Marlene. You later learn that Frenchie escaped. And Marlene and the crew laid Specter beneath the idol of Khonshu after he collapsed in the tomb. His spirit had an encounter with Khonshu, the ancient Egyptian god of the moon, if you wonder who Khonshu was, sorry, uh, who promised to save his life in exchange for eternal service. Specter agreed, although he later said that he considered this encounter to be a hallucination. Can I tell you a fun fact about Khonshu? Uh-huh. So when Khonshu is depicted um, in ancient Egyptian iconography he is painted green in his face and that is believed to be the reason why like zombies and cartoon characters who are dead are painted green oh okay um because of this resurrection by Kanchu, uh specter was able to defeat bushman by re- removing the burial shroud from the statue of Kanchu and wrapping it around himself as a makeshift cloak and everyone that is the white moon knight cloak mm. We know what that is. Thus, Moon Knight was born. Now, let's step out of this a bit. Mark claims Khonshu wants him to be a Moon Knight and redeem his life of violence by now protecting and avenging the innocent. Now, while early stories imply that Spectre is merely insane, it is later revealed that Khonshu is actually real not even a spirit, not even a hallucination, but supposedly one of several entities from the other void, a dimension outside of normal time and space, who were worshipped as gods by ancient Earth people, sort of a chariot of the gods, if Mm -hmm. you will. Now, Ashley, let's break down this complex and overly retconned and overly complicated origin from what I've just told you. Um, I want to ask you, should Khonshu be real, be an illusion in Mark's brain, or be an alien? Interesting question. Or is it more interesting that it is complicated? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not. And particularly with comic books, where we do always say make your own continuity, but a streamlined origin definitely helps. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's something that we've made fun of here for years, is characters where they do these really wild, out there retcons. My preference, because I like fantasy a little bit better than sci-fi, is to make Khonshu the actual god, but then by contemporary standards, you have to consider why would an Egyptian god want his soldier or representative to be a white guy? The guy who almost was actually trying to rob his tomb. Yeah, yeah. So like that gets a little muddled, but um, I would be much more interested in the idea that it's actually a god. All right, interesting. Yeah. How about you? Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. I, I, I'm not a big fan of supernatural characters give people powers, to be mm-hmm. honest with you. You think it's too convenient? Yeah, I actually think, to be honest with you, I actually think it's more interesting that Kanshu is a construct of his imagination, mm-hmm. is another alter. Oh, there you go. That's um, interesting. You know, and, and that he's sort of, I, I, I think it's more fascinating if the idea is, is that he wasn't completely dead. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he was close oh, enough. Nearly dead. And yeah. this was like the last synapse of his subconscious mm, firing off well because think about it right like if he was dying and and again this is all me just off the top of the dome just you know subjecting um well we also know when you die your brain releases all these crazy chemicals but which they they laid him crazy, under this statue yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. of conchu so if he's sitting there staring and he's dying who knows what his subconscious did mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. and like i would totally buy that his subconscious like made this statue come alive. Yeah, that's that's definitely more interesting. But I think it's I think it's fascinating that neither of us wants it to be aliens. We're like, nah, yeah, no yeah. aliens, please. Well, we've seen that. I, I think Stargate put that to bed. Yeah, Stargate <laughs> certainly did the best uh, is the best thing. You know, the best thing that Chariots of the God gave us. Yeah. It's yeah. dark game. Uh, and if you don't know what Charity of the Gods, everybody is, it's a book that was released in the 60s, mm-hmm. I believe, that basically that that is the that is the book that basically espoused um, that the ancient uh, aliens, all the ancient aliens, it basically all the gods from our past are um, are, are are actually aliens. And, and it's kind of a problematic book, um, mm-hmm. but it, you have to I think you have to like wink towards it because it set off a whole basically genre of science fiction literature. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and Mark 
and I think you can tell that Moon Knight is even influenced by that. I would definitely agree. I think a lot of comic yeah. books Jack, are. Jack Kirby was definitely influenced by that. But anyway. Yeah, New God. To back to <laughs> Moon Knight. So Mark, now as the Moon Knight, returned to the United States with Marlene and Frenchie. And the statue of Khonshu, he took it with him. Yep, he took it across borders. Somehow snuck it on his plane. Don't ask me how, but he got it. Uh, I think the, uh, I think, you know, um, I think. This giant statue made of sandstone. <laughs> just like a colonizer, eh? Yeah, truly. I was going to be like, <laughs> just like the British Museum being like, this is mine now. <laughs> uh, in order to continue his work, he used the savings that he had collected during his mercenary days, and he invested them. And he turned them into a small fortune, probably in the S&P 500 index, whatever you want. You know? He was like, I'm going to take my blood money and I'm going to invest it in the stock market. I'm putting it all in moon coin. Uh, <laughs> Not moon coin. <laughs> um, so, yes. Um, so he, because of that, that's how he basically became a millionaire. And this is how he used his finances to basically support his private war and set up a shop in New York City. So oh, I didn't have, realize he was a million. I didn't realize he was a yep. white guy millionaire. <laughs> yeah. So we have another superhero with the powers of the millionaire. Yay. Um, but here's the real question of this is that you have to wonder like how many jobs as a soldier of fortune did he do to even have the chunk of money to invest to make him a millionaire like, i don't i don't think the question is how many jobs did he do it's how how evil was he willing to go to make that amount well that's what money. i'm saying like yeah. as a soldier of fortune again soldier yeah you're probably killing people Absolutely. Or you are arming mm -hmm. innocent people yes, or yes. yeah. Or kidnapping yeah. people. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're doing yeah. a lot of evil act. And again, that is part of is what Moon this is. a James Bond villain. <laughs> well, again, started off as a villain. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I will tell you, um, I will tell you from doing the research of this lesson, again, I was about half familiar with Moon Knight and I didn't now doing this, I've got to learn his entire history. And part of me thinks that he should just be a villain. Uh, I agree. Kind of a uh, kind of in the Slade Wilson mm -hmm, tract mm -hmm. where like you could give him the an you could give him a title. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, an antihero is a villain. <laughs> I, know, I know. Okay, so Mark decided to distance himself from his mercenary days by taking on the persona of Stephen Grant, a millionaire entrepreneur and a high roller whose jet set personality enabled him to go amongst the high rollers and the elite in New York <laughs> so City. He'd be, so he's Elon Musk. Yes, yeah, so or Bruce Wayne. Uh, <laughs> realizing the value of these contacts as criminal activities are often plotted and planned at cocktail parties and boardrooms. Mark, no, that's where Geek History Lesson is talked about. <laughs> Mark also decided to create a persona for lower level contacts and invented the identity of Jake Lockley, a New York cab driver. Now, actually, do these names sound familiar to you? Yes, you talked about them at the start of the show. Yep, I just wanted to confirm these are the alters from his childhood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, now, while Frenchie soon developed Moon Knight's costume and Moon Knight's weapons, and Frenchie even built a customized helicopter known as the Mooncopter. Stop. Yep. <laughs> uh, they eventually reached out to a group of aristocrats called the Committee. This committee... Uh, that Moon Knight at first thought was good, had plans to capture and retrieve a person that had said to been causing problems across New York. This person, of course, was Jack Russell, the werewolf at night. Um, and what Moon Knight didn't know is that the committee was planning to use Jack Russell as a weapon to rule New York, to use the werewolf as night as an enforcer. With Frenchie acting as the go-between, um, he presented the committee members Moon Knight as a mercenary and ostensibly uh, revealed the Moon Knight costume and weapons um, that Frenchie had claimed that he had only built to battle the werewolf at night. So the committee was like, ooh, look at, oh, look at that white. Look at these, like, look at that moon copter. Ooh, he can go after a werewolf. <laughs> like um, how his next step was to talk to oligarchs. <laughs> yep. um, Mark confronted the werewolf at night because the committee hired him and he was successful. Uh, but his suspicions were realized when he discovered that the committee's goals uh, were evil, and he proceeded to, rele to re release Jack and defeat the committee together, which actually earned him their undying enmity. Mm. They didn't like him. And it also established Moon Knight as a vigilante to be respected. So um, that is, the, of course, the first appearance of Moon Knight, as we talked about in the origins. Yep. yep, but yep, yep also, yep. speaking of other vigilantes, over at patreon.com slash Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N, guys, we're going to be talking about the MC future, MCU future of Moon Knight, specifically 
do we want to see Moon Knight join the movie Adventures? So if you want to hear that bonus podcast and also other bonus podcasts like Jason and Ashley, John about Justice League or Justice Jason League. Jason and Jeremy, John about Justice League. What did I say? Jason and Ashley. Oh, I'm sorry. So many Jason ants. Sorry. Well, Ashley's going to appear on the season two premiere of that Spoiler podcast. So come on over. Alert. Uh, but yes, we have a Justice League review podcast and we have Jason and Ashley's Excellent Adventures where Ashley and I get personal about our lives over there on Patreon. So many bonus podcast and the MCU future of the Moon Knight. Interesting discussion. So head on over there and get more hours of chatting than you would ever need at patreon.com slash John. Uh, thank you to super friends who already do support us over there. But uh, come on over if you want to hear some more MCU uh, Avengers talk. That'll be pretty good, I think. Now back to Moon Knight. Woo! Mark's father passed away. Sadly. I didn't and, even know he was still alive. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he, I, I, I had not said he died at this no, point. No, I know, I know. I just assume all superheroes have dead parents. Because of this trauma, Spectre's mental trauma combined with juggling mm. his characters caused him to suffer a nervous breakdown. And this is where he was first diagnosed with multiple personality disorder, or as it was later renamed, dissociative identity disorder. Uh, after several months of recuperating from his mental health, Mark Spectre retired as Moon Knight. I honestly love that for him. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's the end of our Moon Knight lesson. So I want to thank everybody for, uh, you wow, know, we're at like group, group level. Yeah. Uh, you know, here it's very, no, he did not retire. Um, but I will say that Marlene, remember old Marlene? Yep. 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 Uh, Marlene, when he retired, look, you should always support your loved ones. Marlene didn't really support Mark. Mark kind of, uh, Marlene kind of said, Hey, Mark. Hey, Marlene. You know that Jake Lockley, that debonair guy, this you know, uh, um, that debonair dude, uh, the, you know, the the cabbie? He's kind of debonair. <laughs> cabbie is debonair? I love that. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm getting that confused. I apologize. Um, she actually preferred the sophisticated Stephen Grant persona, the jet setter, the Bruce Wayne. And she convinced Mark to give up his Jake Lockley and his original identity of, of Mark Spector, his original author. Um, and he did. Uh and then Mark became convinced that he only had a near-death experience, like we were talking about before, and he hallucinated Khonshu, and he even sold the idol of the Egyptian deity that he had He didn't stolen. give it back to the nice people. He stole it from probably in Thebes, because that's where he was the patron god of, but he just sold it off. Look, you have to realize, again, this man is a soldier of fortune. He is not a good dude. I know, but as, it's upsetting. As much as we want to retcon that he is a good dude, he... No, no, he's on the Harley Quinn Deadpool track. He started as a villain. He, yeah. This is, he is not a nice guy. Yeah. Um, he, he's a guy that was so itching for a fight that he was like, I'll fight anybody for money. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, so Mark suddenly became plagued by strange dreams, which convinced them that he had to return to the Valley of the Kings in Egypt. And because of these dreams, Marlene broke up with him. Oh, yep. <laughs> okay. In the Egyptian Valley of the Kings, because Mark was like, I'm going, I don't care. He met three ancient priests of Khonshu who told him that Khonshu had chosen him as the earthly champion and they gave him new weapons. They proclaimed Mark as the fist of Khonshu and he was gifted with an assortment of mystical weapons and supernatural strength that grew and waned with the phases of the moon. Again, and you give this power to not... A woman. <laughs> mm -hmm. His strength was renewed and his faith was restored and Mark would once again take up the mantle of the Moon Knight. And even, he was even more powerful than before. Uh, and also he had some, he had some awesome swag. He had some pretty, he, had some, he had some wrist gauntlets. He got he a nice new belt. He has always looked cool. Moon Knight has always looked cool. Yep. Um, because of this, he was able to defeat a plot that was uh, taken on by the Egyptian god Anubis. Hey, God of the Dead. Yep. That actually makes sense. That's mm -hmm. a smart choice. And he was able to rescue the idol of Khonshu that he had sold. So, okay. <laughs> yep. Then Mark teamed up with an old team favorite of ours. Ooh, can I guess? Uh, sure. Teen or team favorite? Team. West Coast Avengers. Yep. The West Coast Avengers. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. If you had said teen, I would have said Spider-Man. No. Uh, when the West Coast Avengers were trapped in ancient Egypt, Hawkeye made a pack with Kanchi, old Clint Barton. Hey, I love that for Clint. He called up the, on the God phone and said, hey, Kanchi, can you get us out of this? <laughs> the God phone. Yep. Well, he knows Thor. Maybe he has a God mm -hmm. phone. But in ancient Egypt, Hawkeye 
actually created an assortment of weapons that Kanchu mystically enhanced and would subsequently, through time, be gifted to Mark Spector in the 20th century. That's kind of a cool, like, yep. comic booky nonsense yep. thing to do. I like that. Yep. So, and because of this and all these adventures, Moon Knight would eventually join the team as, and by the way, this is actually confirmed in continuity. I know exactly the number Avenger. And I'm talking about when you join the West Coast Avengers and you join the normal Avengers, there is a numbered uh-huh, uh-huh, according to uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, according to the story, Mark is the blank Avenger to sure. join the Avengers. Uh-huh. Ashley, would you like to make the guess what number? 666. No, much no way. They're even 666 even now. <laughs> I bet there have been. No. You, you don't renumber a person. Like if Captain America joins the third uh, for a fourth yeah, time. Yeah, but there's like rem- 85 Avengers Just teams. make a guess, please. Seven. <laughs> uh, okay, quite low, but no, no, no. Uh, he is the 24th. Okay. Okay. I just thought the gag of 666 would be so good. No, he is that. That's uh, he is a, he is in Egyptian mythology, actually. He's not in uh, Judeo-Christian mythology, so. Um, Sigh. <laughs> uh, while an Avenger, Spectre became romantically involved with Tigra. Ashley, would you like to explain who Tigra is? Tigra is a Marvel Comics mm, mostly villain. No, she's a Marvel Comics mostly Avengers hero. Oh, well, she fought the West Coast Avengers, um, who has kind of ca- not even cat power. She dressed up in a cat suit. She's all covered in fur, but yeah. she is 100% a hero. Uh, um, so uh, Mark learned that Khonshu was actually possessing him during this time period. Mm -hmm, That mm -hmm, all these mm -hmm. mystical weapons and stuff was Khonshu taking over his body. And Mm. that was the true source of his supernatural powers. Now, Mark was uncertain how much influence Khonshu had on him over the past few months. He was uncertain whether even Khonshu was the one who had created his relationship with Tigra. So he broke up with Tigra, he broke up with the Avengers, and he abandoned all of his mystical weapons. I mean, that that makes sense to me. Like, do I really like you or is it this? Mm-hmm. Now, let me ask you this, Ashley. Mm-hmm. Do you like, do you think Moon Knight should be a supernaturally powered character or should he just be no. a street vigilante? He should be a vigilante. Just like a punchy, punchy guy. Why or why not? He's um, very connected to Egyptian mythology and supernatural. Yeah, that's true. But if we're going by our previous discussion point that uh, Khonshu is another one of his alters, mm-hmm. then I don't think he should actually have magical powers. Mm-hmm. I think that's a step too far, personally. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um. So I kind of like that he's supernatural. Do you? Yeah, I don't know. But you don't want it to be Khonshu? Yeah, but I kind of like the idea that like he gets supernatural powers. Again, like I'm trying to think about how do you make this character more distinct from like a Batman? Because a lot of people say that Moon Knight is the Batman copy or even Daredevil, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I like the idea that he has like these weird powers that you can't explain. Yeah, I mean, he's not more interesting than Daredevil. So. No, he's so, like that's that's just my opinion, but. Yeah. Uh, so Moon Knight went on a whole series of adventures, got back with Marlene, and here are some bullet points. Okie dokie. He briefly fought in the Infinity War and the Infinity Crusade. He was killed a second time and brought back by Khonshu. He fought with his brother, who also wanted to be Moon Knight. Uh, but finally, Spectre exercised one of his long-term demons when he brutally killed Bushman, the man who originally killed him in Egypt. And he used the sharp end of a crescent dart to carve off Bushman's face. Now, at the time, he was unaware that the battle had been set up by a new generation of the committee. Remember Mm, them from the first adventure? They were the ones that hired him to get the uh, werewolf by night. So after this, Mark became a more savage. I have to use the qualifier of more because he's Yeah, 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 yeah. And he became more brutal as Moon Knight, and he defeated the new committee. And Khonshu revealed himself to Mark and said that he had planted the seeds of vengeance in the minds of the new committee. So Khonshu said, hey, man, look, look, hey, bro, hey, Moon Knight. Yeah. Hey, all right, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm Khonshu. <laughs> hey, how's it going? All right, man. I sound like, I don't know, I'm just going down here, all right? Uh, I just thought, like, you needed to be more vengeful 
So uh-huh, uh-huh. I gave the idea to the committee. Remember uh-huh, them? Uh-huh, Those uh-huh. guys that told you to like go after the were- American werewolf in Paris. Um, Teen Wolf, that Teen Wolf guy. <laughs> I, d- I don't like him playing basketball. So I convinced this new committee to attack you because I thought you were not vengeful enough. So uh, we good? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, all hell conch you. Uh, <laughs> all glory to conch you. <laughs> uh, actually, no. Mark was mad. Oh, I'm sorry. Go expletive yourself. Yeah. Mark was like, <laughs> why would you make my enemies come after me? <laughs> like, so, um, Kanshu basically manipulated them all in an attempt to make Mark pray and become more loyal and faithful to him. Um, it sounds like it backfired. <laughs> yeah. So Kanshu, uh, basically ain't a cool God or an alien or whatever the hell he is. Okay. So, now Moon Knight would uh, go to join Cap's Secret Avengers in a pretty good run. Mm-hmm. Uh, he would even go to Hollywood and become a television producer of a show called The Legend of Khonshu, which is based on his own past in a Brian Michael Bendis storyline. Now, here's the crazy thing about this Brian what Michael Bendis storyline. What did Brian Michael Bendis think of TV producers? Um, <laughs> not, not, he did not have positive thoughts. Um, but in this Brian Michael Bendis storyline, Mark developed three new alters, and his alters were Wolverine, Spider-Man, and Captain America. Um, yep. We're just going to move on from this. Yeah, yep, yep, Three yep. months later, the Legends of Conchu series was canceled, and Mark Knight, uh, excuse me, I called him Mark, Mark Knight. Knight. <laughs> Moon Knight abandoned LA for New York. Now, now we're getting into the Mr. Knight run of Moon Knight that I know that you have read, Ashley. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to know your basic thoughts on it. And um, if you could chat, we could chat about it briefly with the readers. So this was your yeah. first exposure to Moon Knight. This is a departure as you can tell from all the previous Moon Knight stuff. Yeah. Uh, What were your thoughts on the Moon Knight, Declan Shelby run of Moon Knight? So if you... Excuse me, the Mr. Knight. I said the Moon Knight run of Moon Knight. I mean, Moon Knight's (laughs) in it more than Mr. Knight is in it, Mm -hmm. to be fair. Um, This is the run that introduces Mr. Knight. Um, If you read this and you wipe out all the word balloons, and I don't mean that to be disrespectful of the letterer. Lettering is so important. Uh Please pay your letterer well. Um, It's a great book. Because Declan Shelby is an incredibly talented artist who draws the hell out of Moon Knight. Like Chris Somney, Shelby really understands the interplay of uh, light and dark and light and shadow. And a character like Moon Knight, who operates mostly in the dark with an all-white costume, really illustrates that very, very well. So if if that's the way I recommend reading it, because if you um, read the words and try to figure out what's happening... There's nothing to be gleaned. There's very little to be understood. And I can't quite tell. um, And it's honestly because I'm not interested in giving that much thought to it, whether or not this is intentionally supposed to be like an Alice in Wonderland, like flurry fantasy to give a sense of what being Mark Spector living with these altars might be like, or if it's just a writer uh, with a lot of status running unchecked by editorial. (laughs) So... If you're looking for a great Moon Knight mood board, this is it. Um, mm-hmm. This book is very readily available. It's super easy to get your hands on. It's very it's in print right now. Um, I think it's a good primer for what I think the show is going to be. And it's only six issues. But in, if you ask me to tell you what the story is, um, Mr. Knight gets introduced um, Mr. Knight is a persona who is added. Well, let me let me tell them. Oh, all okay, that. sorry. Yes. But Mr. Knight gets introduced. That's really important. Moon Knight punches some ghosts, and then the book ends. Yes, that's kind of the basic plot. So I'm not going to tell because, like Ashley said, I'm not going to tell you everything that happens in this arc. But it's um, wild, friends. So Mark returned to New York. Yes, he repaid himself with laundered old money and new technology, and I'm going to assume TV producer money. Yeah, he gets a plane. Yep, and he gets a automatic self-driving limo yep and with his new mr knight persona slash alter mm-hmm. this is where you see moon knight in the white business suit yes uh marvel or uh, disney plus put him on a poster yes and he started working with the numerous uh, on numerous nypd cases with detective flint while also continuing to act as moon knight a psychologist told him that he did not suffer from dissociative identity disorder and that his mind had been colonized by Kanchu. And each of Kanchu's four aspects were taking on one of the three personalities that he had at the time or during his more psychotic moments. The apparent multiple personalities were his brain's way of making sense that Kanchu was this like 
alien omnipotent o- from an omniverse. Yeah. This is the storyline that introduced this. So it gets very trippy. It gets very weird. And, um, you know, I'll just say it to that. I'll leave it at that. Like, uh, I also assume that this is a storyline that the Disney Plus series is going to touch on a lot. And again, at the mm-hmm. time of this recording, mm-hmm. have not seen the Disney mm-hmm. Plus series. So I'm only making wild speculation. And, uh, you know, please don't make a comment to be like, of course they touched on it. Yeah, I know. I have. This is before the series. I haven't seen the series. Mm. Relax. Slow your typing. Okay. Um, now, after the Mr. Knight story arc, Jeff Lemire also wrote a trippy run of Moon Knight where Khonshu seems to have sent Mark and his allies, including Frenchie and Marlene, to a mental hospital designed to wear away the last of Mark's mind, thus allowing Khonshu to fully inhabit Mark's body and use it to enter our world. Um, Mark finds himself with no memory of how he's inside this hospital. Frenchie, he doesn't really know Frenchie. He doesn't know Marlene. They have no memory of how they got there. Um, And he basically, during the storyline, is put into a mental battle against Khonshu. Mm -hmm. Now, it's very unclear what is real and what is not real in this run. Um, But towards the end, Mark crushes an illusion of Khonshu's head. And thus it is said that he has reconciled his illness and he has gained control over all of his personalities once and for all. Um, so Ashley, I'm going to ask you, Uh uh-huh. is a moon Knight without Khonshu interesting or is Khonshu Ooh. manipulating this guy, whether he is an alien, whether he is a God, whether he is a fragment of Mark's, um, you know, identity or his, one of his alters is a moon Knight without Khonshu Good or bad or interesting all or is Kanchu you do need Kanchu for this character to work. I do think you need Kanchu mm-hmm. because even if Kanchu is simply a construct of Mark's mind, mm-hmm. uh, which seems to be our preferred version of it, mm-hmm. stripping that away just makes him a man who needs treatment. It makes mm-hmm. it like really sad because you're stripping away the fantasy element of it. It almost makes him like I've said many times, like the Punisher, a man who just needs to go to, to a lot of therapy. Yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, Who probably needs to go to a nice facility in the countryside mm-hmm. and, and just like get himself taken. You know, it just kind of makes him a sad uh-huh. <laughs> veteran, a lot like Punisher. Um, but the image of Moon Knight crushing Conchu's head in a in a you know thank you Game of Thrones for the inspiration, um, like that's a powerful image and I can totally understand why you would want to use that um, on panel and I wouldn't be shocked to see that on screen honestly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is Mark Spector without Conchu, supposedly in control of his abilities, right? Sure. Well, not till the next story because the next story throws all of that away and it's back to Moon Knight being controlled with Conchu. Yeah, so, sounds about sounds about comic books. <laughs> um, and it's actually an Avengers story. Hey, okay. Uh, so the Phoenix Force. Ashley, what is that? Oh boy. Yep. Uh, that is the alien entity that comes down from on high and likes to infect Jean Grey and sometimes some other folks. And but uh, mainly Jean Grey. But mainly Jean Grey has a mad crush on Jean Grey. Yeah, very like Scott Summers in that way. Yes. Um, in order to make her the Phoenix. So the Phoenix Force. It's on its way due to Mephisto's machinations. Ah, uh, everybody's favorite Marvel Comics villain. <laughs> yes, uh, basically Marvel's Satan, who everybody thinks is going to show up in every Disney Plus series. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Khonshu gave Moon Knight orders to steal the abilities of a Stone Age team resembling the Avengers. Now, this is a recent concept in Marvel Comics. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of mixed on what I think about this concept because I do think it's a cool idea but then in some stories, I don't think it's a cool idea. Basically, what has been introduced has been introduced by Jason Aaron in his recent run of Avengers. Mm-hmm. Um, that there are these mantles in the Marvel Universe, like the Iron Fist, mm-hmm. like the Sorcerer Supreme, mm-hmm. like the Ghost Rider, mm-hmm. and like Thor, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Odin. Yep, yep. Um, and that they sort of all teamed up. A million years ago on Earth Mm -hmm. in the BC times. Like, again, they're like sort of nicknamed the Stone Age Adventures. Yes. Um, So, Khonshu Mm -hmm. also existed during those times. Sure. So, Khonshu is part of this. Okay. So, Khonshu gave Moon Knight the order to steal 
all the abilities of Iron Fist, Doctor Strange, Ghost Rider, and Thor. Now, Moon Knight succeeded. Mm -hmm. He got like all these abilities, right? Um, and he gave these powers to Khonshu. Mm. Now, Khonshu took these powers and invaded Manhattan. Of course he did. And he renamed Manhattan New Thebes City. Am yeah. I saying that right? Thebes, yeah. yeah because Thebes the was the center of Khonshu's yep. uh, power. And he time. decided to conquer Earth. I love that for him. Um, So... Moon Knight is kind of like, oh, what? <laughs> what, are you, yeah. what are you? What is this? Um, and it became a conflict between Khonshu and Moon Knight. Now, the Avengers, with some Moon Knight talking, they kind of came up with a backup plan. And the backup plan was, hey, Moon Knight, you know what you should do? You Crush should, your head. <laughs> no, you should become the new Phoenix because that'll give you enough powers to take on Khonshu with all these powers as the Sorcerer Supreme and Iron Fist and Ghost Rider and Thor. That's a terrible plan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It, look, <laughs> this story is kind of all the powers of the Marvel Universe versus all the powers of the Marvel yeah. Universe. But it's kind of like, the hey, box. there's a bomb threat. Let's bomb it with a bigger bomb. Yep. <laughs> like, that, that guy's got a nuke. Let's nuke him. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so Moon Knight became the new host of the Phoenix and used those powers to attack Khonshu. And actually, he defeated Khonshu. Now... He's really lucky that the Avengers didn't put him in prison. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because Mark Spector kicked off this event by stealing all the powers and allowing Khonshu to take over New York. Um, weirdly, the Avengers, because of comic books, actually asked him to join the team, and he refused. Good. <laughs> um, Khonshu mm -hmm. got locked up by the Asgardians. Okay, sure. You know, so now they're guarding Khonshu. Yep, yep, yep. And... As a result of his rejection of Khonshu as an object of worship, uh, Mark Spector has kind of been like, you know what? I'm going to assume my master's role of like protecting the night travelers and the innocent. Mm. So in Manhattan, he's kind of claimed a portion of the city as his territory, and he is still brutally protecting because that's what Moon Knight does. He just brutally protects anybody. Mm -hmm. And he has opened up a new congregation called the Midnight Mission, whose doors are open to anybody who needs help at night. Mm. And that is kind of where that's an interesting idea, actually. Yes. And it's and he's sort of back to being Mr. Knight quite a bit. Yeah. yeah while yeah. he's running the mission. Um, but that's my Moon Knight that I I prefer over the I got all the powers, the Marvel Universe. Ah! Yeah, totally. That's um, that's a bit of a leap. Um, but that's where I'm going to leave us on Moon Knight. OK. And if you're still thoroughly confused, welcome, welcome. to the club. <laughs> welcome to the club. Uh, and that's where we're going to leave uh, Moon Knight. I am impressed that you made most of that make sense. I mean, honestly, actually, I good don't know. Job. I don't know if a lot of that made sense while I was even telling that to you. So, <laughs> um, let's get into uh, the recommended reading. Ashley, what is that? That is where if you go to geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading, we've got these cool little widgets. You click on them, you buy all of the Moon Knight stories that you're interested in, and you see if you can make any more sense of them than we did. Also over there, we just want to mention at geekhistorylesson.com, we have a blog, new posts going up every Thursday, some really, really cool posts over there. There so is even Moon Knight content There's up Moon Knight there. content, so go check that out too as well if you want some more Geek History Lesson content. Brand new this year, we're super proud of it. Um, The first choice going on here is Moon Knight Volume 1 from the dead um this is just a really good um you know um M moon knight story this is the mr knight story yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. um it, i think it's a really good primer for the disney plus series it's very stripped down and you don't need to know anything else about moon knight honestly. I, I also don't think we would have the disney plus series if we didn't have this series i like, agree this is kind of like the modern revamp of moon knight um you might have noticed we haven't mentioned the writer because he's mm -hmm. a problematic individual and I'm not going to name check him on this podcast. So, so just look at the pretty pictures. But Declan Shelby, who is the artist, is amazing. And um, I, again, I, I am only recommending it because I think the Disney Plus series is, is mostly going to take from the Anything show. that you've seen from the Disney Plus series is literally directly from this. <laughs> the other one I'm going to suggest is the Moon Knight Epic Collection Bad Moon Rising. This is Moon Knight's first series. Great title. Um, This is the first solo series of Moon Knight. So that's why I definitely want, think you should go check it out. And then also I'm going to suggest Moon Knight Volume 1 Lunatic Moon. Uh, this is the Jeff Lemire series. Mm -hmm. Moon Knight's not really in this book. Again, it's a bunch of people wandering in a hospital fighting Khonshu. Yeah. But it's Jeff Lemire 
the art is also amazing. I don't know who does the art of this one. Harold, let me figure this out. I can uh, figure it out. You finish it. I have the link right here, actually. Okay. So I'm going to figure it out pretty quickly. Um, but this is, it's kind of like, I call it, uh, Greg Smallwood is the artist. Um, and it's kind of like Twilight Zone Moon Knight. So I, I had a lot of fun reading it, although it's not really traditionally a Moon Knight story. But sometimes that's refreshing and sometimes that's what a character needs. Yeah. So those are my choices. Um, again, go over there, click on those widgets and get them if you want to read them before the Disney Plus series. And let's get to the teaching tweet. Jason's favorite part of the podcast, where in, I don't know, like 200 characters or less, he's going to tell you everything you need to know about Moon Knight. And we post these every Tuesday at GHL Podcast. Dressed all in white, he's called Moon Knight. He beats up bad guys with ease. However, with his connection to the moon, is disappointing. No part of his origin is coupled with cheese. Cheese? Because the moon is made of cheese. Oh, I was like, you're just looking for a rhyme, huh? No, because the moon is made of cheese. I it's sci- That's scientific fact. Science. Khonshu is secretly the god of cheese. Honestly, I'm retconning that. What a right great now. God. Let's get to the honor roll. The honor roll, which is where if you go to Apple Podcasts and you give us a five star review, we will read whatever you write. If you're an international person, we can't see your international iTunes, Apple Podcasts. So email us your reviews. Let us know what country you're from uh, to geekhistorylesson at gmail.com so that we can include you. We have two fine folks joining the honor roll today. The first is M. Brosh, who says, number one podcast in the world. You guys have literally helped me learn all the new little facts and things I love about new characters you've done lessons on. My number one go-to podcast to listen to while I work. I absolutely love it. Keep up the amazing work. P.S. I've recently started liking Maestro of all characters, and it would be awesome if you guys did a lesson on him. <laughs> uh, Ashley, have we done the Hulk we have done the Hulk. We did talk about Maestro. We talked about on our Maestro. Hulk. We did that with uh, Jay I, Washington was our guest on that episode. I like the Maestro storyline. I don't know if there's enough to for a full lesson. Yeah, I, I know we did name check him because I'm a big fan of the Peter David Hulk run. Um, but um, thank you for this. Maestro is a very cool character. So uh, yes. here's some applause for you. And they are also joined by teacher Jay Lars, who says, great research and very entertaining. Ashley and Jason are excellent, very knowledgeable hosts who don't talk down to their listeners. They cover a variety of topics, and I want to thank them for getting me into the Expanse. Oh, hey, I love that. I'm so happy that our Expanse episode got so many people into the Expanse. Yeah. Very, very happy. Great show, great book series. Well, welcome into the Teacher's Lounge, everybody. Uh... What's going on in there today, Jason? I, I'm, I always wait for, see, sometimes Ashley remembers to ask me that. Sometimes she doesn't. Um, <laughs> today, Ashley, um, we actually have a very interesting professor. Oh, boy. He has a long nose, and he's in the corner. And he's, Pinocchio? No, and he's handing out scimitars to people and asking them to become <laughs> soldiers of fortune. Professor Kanchi was in the corner. I don't, I don't know if I would... I don't know if I would trust him. I don't know if I would recommend becoming a soldier of fortune. Um, I would I would stay away. Um, you know, I don't know. Be wary of him. But welcome to the teacher's lounge. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, everybody in there. Don't forget, um, if you want to join the teacher's lounge and be part of the honor roll, go over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. And while you're over there, don't forget to follow and subscribe. And also, if you liked this podcast and you have a friend out there who doesn't know anything about Moon Knight, feel free to suggest the podcast to your friend. It's the greatest way to grow the podcast. Ashley, where can they find us on social media, this podcast? You can find us on geekhistorylesson.com, on facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson, on Twitter at GHL Podcast, and on our brand spanking new Instagram at Geek History Lesson. Uh, yeah, and also just want to make you know, um, we've had some people ask us about this. Um, if you, we have Geek History Lesson pins mm-hmm. so you can show your school love and you can find those over at geekhistorylesson.com they're actually on Etsy but like there's the link is over at geekhistorylesson.com yeah, 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 so go yeah. check those out um, we've had a lot of people ask us about those recently and I just want to like make sure that hey they're still available they're out there uh, don't forget to follow Ashley and her amazing Kickstarter over on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley B. Robinson follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jawan that's J-A-W I I N and now we are here for the hashtag stick around and the hashtag stick around is intern Brego has entered the studio. Will you join Kanju's quest, Ashley? Absolutely not. I know. Actually, the real stick. <laughs> well done. The actual- of all of all Egyptian gods, not Kanju. <laughs> um, actually, um, 
Do you like Moon Knight's all white costume? His classic 70s all white, kind of like Daredevil, right? Like there was a weird rash in the Silver Age of just like, let's just give characters one color. And I think it's because artists were like, Spider-Man's too hard to draw. I think it's because <laughs> there were limited uh, number of colors you could print easily back in um, that four color printing days. But the all white man with a hood cape costume, Moon Knight. Do you like it? Yes. Why? It looks great. It, it's such a good contrast to the dark sky. And I definitely am in the camp where I believe that he's a Batman ripoff. And it's just an inversion of the Batman costume. But I think it's a really smart choice. Do you not? No. Pourquoi pas? I like the update that they do to it in the Mr. Knight where they, they introduce some the black. They intro- no, oh, no, no, no. Where they, it's a cloud, yeah, but they yeah, introduce yeah, yeah, some yeah. black yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. Um, there is, like, by the way, um, there is. Hold on just one second. Action figure spotlight. There is a Moon Knight action figure that was made, I think, about ten years ago of that black yes. and white. It's, it's. Look, I'm not. Uh, I probably will never own a Moon Knight action figure, but that was that design looks so cool because Declan Shelby designed it. I almost bought it because I think that I think that update, like introducing just touches of a the little black, bit of detail. Oh. Makes it pop, but having them just all be white to me, it, it looks goofy. I just, I'm constantly like, how is that costume not always dirty? I can't believe that that's the thing that bumps you about Moon Knight is yeah. the white costume. It's it always is. the weird practical details. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but the putting little touches of black armor there, I think it makes it look really cool. Cool. It looks really cool. So there you go. All right, everybody, thank you so much for listening to Geek History Lesson and our Moon Knight episode. Um, I am Jason. All hail Conchu. <laughs> <laughs> Action figure spotlight. <laughs> Inman. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Jason, would you please dismiss the class? Oh, hail, Conchu. <laughs> class is dismissed. <laughs>